aviary attorney today. Let me see. The window doesn't look perfect. Uh, like that. The sizing is really weird, so I'm like trying to adjust it with the screen. But I think I have to like oversize it. It's just ugh. I don't like it when it's not perfectly sized, and is then it's just it looks weird, and then ugh. And I have this weird line at the top, and ugh. Just, just so many problems, you know? <laughs> okay, that should look good. Okay, so, uh, we are playing Aviary Attorney today. Um, I hear this game is like Phoenix Wright, but with a bunch of bird memes. You know, like, if Hato, if Hato full boyfriend and Phoenix Wright had a game together, it would be this. So uh, I'm excited because I haven't played a uh, how to full boyfriend, which I hear is interesting because it's, it's birds. <laughs> um, but I do, yeah, I do like Phoenix Wright though. So let me set this all up and then we can get ourselves all along and ready with the game. Let's go. Okay, new game. Well, actually, I should look at the options first. Let me see. Mm. Let's see this. Confirm. What was this? Did anything resize? No, it's all lies. All right, great. Um, let's start a new game then. January 1st, 1848. The Chateau. Oh gosh. Is it a, uh, I'm okay, whatever. That, that one place. <gasps> the frog. Is that Monsieur? Grenouille, oh mon dieu. Done. Caroline, what have you done? What have you done? Act one, a cat with claws. Oh my goodness. It's midday already. Where on earth is that featherhead? Sparrow Sun. Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to get up. Haven't you heard what they say about the early bird, Falcon? Ugh, too early for worms. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> Pass the wine. There'll be time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Business. A letter arrived while you were sleeping. I haven't opened it yet. It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sprosen. You may have the honors. All right. <clears throat> Dear Monsieur Falcon, I'm writing to you today because my daughter, Dame Caroline, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. She's being held at the concierge prison on the charge of murder, no less. Her trial is in three days' time. I love how it's literally a bunch of birds, but he has like, what looks like regular hands. It's just, <laughs> it's kind of creepy a little bit. <laughs> I would greatly, I would be greatly in your debt if you would offer her your legal aid. Yours sincerely. I'm not even, how? Okay, I don't know how to pronounce fr French all that well, so uh, I'm gonna butcher this so bad. Senor, I hope that's Senor. Senor Bertois de, de Mal. Bertois de Mal of the de Mal estate. Yeah, that's the best I'm gonna get. <laughs> well, this is quite something. I know, your first serious client in months. Not just that, 
The Demao State is well known for its ex exuberant wealth. Even if we cannot do much for Dame Catiline, his lordship would still reward us handsomely for our efforts. Wow, so I suppose you intend on defending Dame Catiline in court? No. <laughs> of course, why not? Of course, it would be foolish to let such a good opportunity slip through our feathers. Grab your coat, Sparrowson. We're going to find our kitty client at La Casse. La Concierge. I don't think I said that. Conciliary. I. Whatever. Excellent. My. Derriere was getting tired from all the sitting around. I had to look at that for a second. Oh, but I prefer. But I better file away, Signor Demas' letter first. One moment, Falcon. Patois' letter has been added to your evidence folder. Okay, cool. Cute little, cute little box. You may access uh, the evidence folder at any time by clicking the suitcase symbol. How are we doing, chat? Hello, how's it going? Uh, welcome to uh, to aviary attorney, the land of bird puns. And that's it so far. I, I literally have been playing this game for like five minutes, so you showed up just in time. Um, ah, nearly forgot my wallet. I wouldn't want to lose that. Again, I recall you losing it at the New Year's party and at Christmas. Yes, all right, no need to make a list. Falcon has picked up his wallet. Doing good, we're on characters, Mountain of Madness. Oh yeah, good, 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 good. Yep, you, yeah, you definitely want to have that prepared before, <laughs> before the session. Like, when I was making Estelle's character, I had Estelle ready to go, like, actually months in advance. <laughs> but, anyway. You may see how much money he is carrying at the time by clicking on the wallet symbol. Okay. 20 francs. Let's make a move. Alright. This is going to be a bunch of really bad bird memes, bird puns, and really bad French by me. <laughs> by moi. Welcome to the map screen. From here, you can travel to any listed area by clicking on a location name or location node. Areas marked with a clock symbol take a whole day to visit. Areas with no symbol can be visited freely. Ah, okay. A sign on the door reads, the aviary attorney offices. No case is too big or too small. No junk, no junk mail. For centuries, the infamous conci concierge, no, it's not concierge, concierge, maybe it is con conciergerie, 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 if that's not correct, that's what I'm calling it, it sounds fancier, the infamous conciergerie, blah, 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 never mind, that's a mouthful, prison, has detained the accused and the condemned alike. Okay, so these are my only two options. Okay, let's go then. Hmm. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the stone cold foyer of the Conciergerie prison. Sullen faced guards and visitors linger beneath the medieval archways. Ah, the Conciergerie. This way, they say this is the finest prison in the whole of France. The outer walls are impenetrable. The cells are spotless. The guards are well-mannered. What do you want? Quark. <laughs> Good day, monsieur. I'm here to see Dame Caterline de Miao. I am due to repre represent her in court. Oh, you're her lawyer, huh? Fine, fine. Follow me. Well, what are you waiting for? Keep up. Papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? Dame Catalina de Mau, I presume. You've arrived! The fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcon, and his petite assistant, Sparrowson. The lady is knowledgeable. Don't. Don't talk like that, Sparrowson. Sorry. My papa told me that 
he would only hire the best lawyers in town. I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice, so he hired the first people in the address directory. Oh. You see, Falcon, I told you listening under aviary attorney would pay off. Let's get down to business. Damn, Cataline, could you fill us in on some details? Your father's letter was a little brief. I can do my best. What is it you wanted to know? Okay, what do we want to know? What happened on the night of the murder? What exactly happened on the night of the murder? Oh, let me think. It was Friday evening. Me and my papa had arrived at Chateau... Oh, sh shoot. Okay. The Chateau... Crinier? You know what? It's Crinier. Okay. Chateau Crinier. The home of the great baron... Oh, gosh. Roar. <laughs> These names. Roar... Roar... I'm gonna say Rorgel. Yeah, Rorgel is probably what I could get. The great Baron Rorgel. My papa spent all evening talking up with Monsieur Grenouille. Grenouille and the Baron about business stuff. Business stuff? Well, the three of them on a railway company together. So all through dinner they were talking about company shares and investments, but... I didn't really understand most of it. But after dinner, this man with a camera took our photograph. That was a lot more fun. Sorry, man with a what took your what? Camera, it's a very new gadget. A tiny bug sits in a box with a tiny paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. In 10 minutes, poof, you have a perfect picture. Wow, technology is amazing. I don't think the lady's explanation is right, Sparrowson. Psh, let me believe. Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll make a note of it. Camera has been added to your evidence folder. Please continue, Dame Cataline. So, after we had the photograph, I went into the gardens to get some air and... That's when I found the body of Monsieur Grenouille. It was all ripped open. A housemaid saw me standing over the froggy Monsieur and called for help, and then the police arrived. Before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. It must have been terrifying. It wasn't so bad. My papa taught me how to be a brave cat. Was there something else you wanted to ask, Monsieur? Oh, oops, Catalan. Was there something else he wanted to ask, Monsieur Falcon? Who was there that evening? Dame Catalan, who attended the banquet that evening? Well, there was me and my papa. My dearest, uh, Maman couldn't make it. And there was Baron Rogel, who hosted the dinner. And his housemaid, Coline, I think she was called. Of course, there was Monsieur Grenouille, until, you know, he died. And there was Monsieur Rubito de Rubino, the man with the camera, but he was only there for a little while. Hmm. I think that was all. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Did you see anything suspicious? Dame Cataline, did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? Like, um, maybe a guy lurking in the shadows, or a, a bloodied murder weapon. Monsieur Falcon, I do believe you are looking for an easy answer. You got me. I do not see anything, I'm afraid. The evening was very normal. The food was delicious. The conversation was boring. It was all very ordinary until the incident. I see. Wait, Falcon. You missed something of huge importance. I did. Damn, Cataline, you said the food was delicious. But you didn't say what food it was. That's right. You get her, Sprouson. You 
You and your damn stomach. Oh, let me see. Uh, we had a poached red herring to start. Garnished with garlic butter. Um, Go on. Uh, then a marbled steak. Served perfect, bloody rare. Glorious. Falcon, write this down. What? That can't possibly be relevant to the case. Write, write it all down, please. For me. Fine, fine. Red herring has been, <laughs> red herring has been added to your evidence folder. Bloody rare steak has been added to your evidence folder. Sparrowson, remind me not to let you talk to clients on an empty stomach. Come to think of it, I did find it a little strange we weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery? Even for the steak? Nope. You would think that the great Baron Chateau Crinier would have glorious silverware, but there was none to be seen. That is a little peculiar. Was there anything else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? No, I think that will be all. So what's the plan now, Falcon? The way I see it, we have two tasks. We should head to Chateau Crenier and try to see the scene of the murder for ourselves. And we should try to track down this supposed photographer, Monsieur Robito de Robino. Two days for two tasks? Seems doable. But we, but we should get head blah, blah, blah. but we should get wait but we should get head back and get some game come on come on this is some BS grammar right here okay I think what happened is probably because because I've run into this situation before um, probably what happened is that the person first wrote but we should get back and get some rest first. But then they saw it again. They were like, oh, I don't want get back and get home. That, that's a lot of get. Let me switch the word to uh, head back. Yeah, we should head back. And then they forgot to delete the get. So now we have, but we should get head back and get some rest first. Anyway, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Wait, Monsieur Falcon, before you go, you... You do believe my story, don't you? I believe in justice. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> um, hmm, what should I write down? I believe you. Of course, Dame Cataline. It's our duty as lawyers and as gentlemen to have faith in your testimony. You can trust us. Thank you. Thank you both. <laughs> Damn Catiline, Monsieur Gwenwi, Baron Regal. These names are all getting a bit confusing, aren't they? Not particularly. Well, it is for me. I'm gonna start complying. I'm gonna start compiling like a Facebook so that I can keep track of who everybody is. A what? A Facebook. You know, it's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions, and one easy-to-carry catalog. I think I understand. The name could use a little to work, though. Sparrowson has started compiling a Facebook. <laughs> I mean, psh, who invented Facebook? Sparrowson invented Facebook. Duh, everybody knows that. Psh. Okay. Well... JJ Falcon. A hey, J that's 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 a cool name, JJ. And then Sparrowson. Falcon's suave and courageous lackey. What a handsome fellow. <laughs> and then Patois de Mao. Demiao. Um Patois hired us to defend. Her court, Quark, the jailkeeper. And then the elegant bourgeois. Bourgeoisie daughter of the blah blah blah. She's been accused. Grenoui, he was found murdered. A colleague. Okay, so that is the Facebook. 
You can access a list of people you have met at any time by clicking the book symbol. Let's make a move. A new day. The game saves automatically at the start of new, every new day. Okay, cool. You can also make a quick save at any time by selecting save and quit from the pause menu. You can ask us the pause menu. Click on the cog signal on the upper left corner? This? That's not even visible. If you did not tell me it was there, I would not, I would never have seen it. <laughs> or by pressing the escape key, I think I'll probably do that. But anyway, that's the prison. There's a chateau. Okay, well, let's go. Let's go find Rubino. So this is the studio of the famous photographer. Shall we not? Oh no, that's Falcon. Oops. So this is the studio of the famous photographer. Shall we knock? Wait, there's a note on the door. Uh-huh. The magnificent and marvelous artist Monsieur Robito de Rubino is currently out on an artistic expedition. He shall return when his muse sees fit. When his muse sees fit? What does that even mean? I think it means that he is a pretentious bird brain. But in any case, the artist seems to be out. What should we do now? Hmm. We should knock anyway. Alright, I don't see the harm. Knock, knock, knock. Nope. Doesn't look like he's in, Falcon. We should... We should break in. What? Are you serious? Maybe? Monsieur J.J. Falcon, I would have thought that a man of justice like yourself would be against such reckless displays of unlawful barbarism. You're right, I... I'm sorry, I... I don't know what came over. It's a brilliant suggestion. Stand back and barging the door down. Just like that. Shouldn't we discuss this first? <laughs> what in Bird Jesus' name was that? <laughs> you said you wanted to break in. I thought we could find an open window. I didn't think you would turn into a bird sized cannonball. Well, now here we ought to make the most of it. This place is. Uh, Ostentatious. That's just a swanky talk for swanky. We don't have time for this. The sound of a door being smashed we could be drawing unwanted attention. We should find anything that may help our cause and get out. I think we can turn the audio down a little bit. Just, just a hot voice volume. There, resume. In investigation mode, you're ex free to examine the scenery of the room. Click on an item, and Falcon will examine it in closer detail when you've had enough. Or when you find something nothing else to examine, click on the X in the top right corner. Great. Hmm, I see paints, inks, and dyes. I'm not sure what the clear liquid in this bottle is. I could taste test it. Good, but we don't have time for a hospital visit right now, so let's not. I see a finely dressed dandy fellow upon a horse. A beautiful picture of the Paris skyline. Given the angle, this must have been taken from Notre Dame Cathedral itself. Notre Dame is very beautiful, I gotta say. I visited Notre Dame. Um, and it was just, it, it's almost kind of like a museum nowadays because there's a lot of stuff you can see in Notre Dame, but it's, it really is very pretty. I didn't get to see Quasimodo, but you know what? He wasn't available that day. It made me sad. I even got a, a coin from Notre Dame. Ah, maybe I'll pull it out later. Anyway. 
this is a photograph of the castle somewhere in the countryside. You know, I once had an uncle who once fell off a castle rampart while on guard duty. Oh, sorry to hear that. Did he die? No, he got demoted. Ugh, terrible. A chandelier? You should get one of those from the office. We don't have money for that sort of luxury. A picture of a sailing ship on a windy day. This is a picture of a fence. It's a fancy photograph. It leaves the viewer defenseless. Out of all the pictures here, I would pick it as my favorite. Okay, I'm done. No more fence puns. Yeah, th that was a lot of fence puns. This is a tiny photograph of what appears to be a jail cell. That reminds me, how illegal is this? You know, breaking the entry, rifling through pe person's belongings. Uh, it's a little illegal. It's very Ill no, it's very illegal. I'm not going to lie to you, Sparrowson. If we're caught, we won't be spending the next 20 years with a number listed instead of a name. I call 24601. 24601. Don't be daft, Sparrowson. You can't call prison numbers. Damn, I wanted that one. Lighthouse? No, wait, that's a man in a top hat. Actually, if I scrolled and tip my head sideways, it's a black smudge falcon. Hey, falcon, look! What? It's just an easel. No, 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 what's on the easel? Oh. Oh, wow, this must be a copy of the photograph from the evening of the murder. There's no question about it. I see a housemaid. Damn, cut a line. And I think that's in your patois. Cut a line's father. So, what do we do? We just take this? We should take it. We've come this far. We may as well borrow it. Great. Is there anything else we needed to do here? Can't like move over to the street. Yes, not. I see a bourgeoisie tigress in the profile. Okay. What? Resume. I think that's it. I think we're done snooping. Let's get out of here before we draw further attention to ourselves. Sounds good to me. Uh-oh. Oh, mon dieu. What happened to my door? Uh... Let me tell the truth. Well, Monsieur Rubino. Oh, it's Rubinio. Oh, okay. Monsieur Rubinio, it's like this. You see, we are attorneys who have been hired for the purpose of... Raven! A raven did it! We saw the whole thing! What are you doing, Sparrows? Got this. I'm not going to jail because of your conscience is acting up. Nobody's going to jail. Just take it easy. Ugh. Damn ravens. They're always after our shiny objects, am I right? D uh, yeah, that's right. Let's make a move. Trial day is approaching fast. Right, let's go. A new day. Okay. Uh, let's go to the chateau. Falcon and Sparrowson enter the courtyard outside the chateau. People with dirty clothes and gaunt faces linger around the building's shadows. Excuse me, messieurs. I don't mean to be a pain, but my little girl and I are sick and starving, see? <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you'd happen to have some spare change. If 20 francs in your wallet, what will you do? Uh, 
Here you go. Here you go. Stay safe, madame. Oh, wow. Bless you, messieurs. Bless you. That was pretty generous of you, Falcon. Times are tough. Making sure a mother and child can make it through the last of winter is the least I can do. But what I'm doing, standing here moralizing... Come on, Sparrowson. We've got business to attend to. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the pristine wood-painted foyer of the chateau. Wow, look at this place. Baron Re What did I what did I say? Regal? I'm gonna say Rogel. Or Rogel? Is it Rogel? I'm gonna say Rogel. Wow, look at this place. Baron Rogel must be loaded. More than loaded. When it comes to lucrative investments, the Baron is a legend. Factories, chocolate shops, hotels, railroads, the Baron owns a little bit of everything. The side of the Seine. Is he here right now? Yes, he's the smug looking chap with the impressive mane. But we must approach a man of his stature with tact and finesse. <laughs> hey, Baron! We lack a word! <laughs> How's that? <sighs> Sparrowson, you have the finesse of an inebriated warthog. You can thank me later. I think I got his attention. Did I hear my name? Great Baron Rugel, property owner extraordinaire at your service. And who might you fellas be, my investigators? Yep, we're policemen. <laughs> no, we're attorneys. Not quite. I'm a private attorney, J.J. Falcon, and this is my associate, Sparrowson. Lawyers, eh? You know, you aren't the first to have passed through here today. Oh. Yes, yes, this jumpy, twitchy fellow came by this morning, asked a bunch of questions, and hopped away before he heard the answers. Most curious. Hmm. Do you know who he was, Sparrowson? Perhaps I have a hunch. Sorry, hunch. Oh, I have a hutch. Sorry, hunch. We'll be seeing him at the trial. A friend of yours? Mm, something like that. So what may I do for you, messieurs? We're doing some research on Monsieur Grenly, the frog who was killed here on Friday evening. Of course, of course. Such a tragedy. He was a good old friend and a loyal business partner. I suppose you messieurs will be wanting to see the crime scene for yourself. Actually, yes, that would be fantastic. Well, be my guest. You will find the garden where the murder occurred through the back doors. You may also be interested in the lounge on the second floor, third door to your right. That would be where we gathered for group photograph prior to the mm. unfortunate incident oh can we see the finished photograph I'm afraid not it is to my understanding that a photograph must be developed before it, be it can be viewed it's a slow process my own copy of the photograph is to be delivered in three days time that's not good to us. The trial may be over by then. Nonetheless, we appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Baron. There's no trouble at all. I'll be here to see you out when you are done with your investigations. So, where shall we go first? Uh, let's go to the lounge. A giraffe made. That's so funny. Second floor. Third door on the right. This must be the room where the photograph was taken. Psst. Hey, Falcon, do you see that? See what? That housemate totally just did something shifty. 
Shifty. I think she just pocketed something from that drawer. You should totally call her out on it. Excuse me, mademoiselle. No, 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 no. We're private attorneys. My name is J.J. Falcon. And I'm Sparrowson. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Colline Duhat. So, um, what can I help you assist with today? We're investigating the murder that took place last week. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? That's fine. Uh, let me grab a chair. That's better. What? Was it you wanted to ask? We're looking for the room where the photograph was taken prior to the incident. Would you happen to know whether this is the right room? Oh yes, you are in the right place. I saw the photography session before myself. Uh, let's see. The cameraman was standing, uh, uh, just about where you're standing, actually, Monsieur Falcon. And where was the camera pointed? Right at the clock, above the mantelpiece. The Baron insisted on using that very location. Now that I'm looking at it, something isn't right about that clock. I know, the painting on it totally clashes with the decor. Ugh, it's so ugly. <laughs> I was thinking along more obvious lines. The clock has no hands. Oh! That clock has never had hands in all the years I've worked here. I think Baron Regal just keeps it around as a conversation piece. Well, we're conversing about it, so I guess it's working. It's a peculiar detail, though. I'll take a note of it. Missing clock hands have been added to your evidence folder. Is this something else you wanted to ask? Is there something we should know? You were a little nervous when we came in. You thought we were police officers. Is there something we ought to know? Anything you need to confess? No, no. I, I suppose I'm just a little nervous after all the drama of last week. Should I pressure or should I ease off? I'm gonna pressure her. Are you sure there isn't anything that you're hiding? It's okay to tell us, we're defense attorneys. That means we help people get away with criminal acts. <laughs> right, and um, wait, what? No, that's not an accurate job description, Sprouse. It isn't? Oh. What do we do then? I'll tell you later. Honestly, messieurs, I have nothing to hide. Was there something else you wanted to ask? That's all. No further questions. Thank you, mademoiselle. You've been a huge help. Uh, it's no problem, messieurs. Actually, there is something. I know you two saw me stealing. As you came in, I appreciate that you didn't give me the third degree about it. You see, I'm trying to save up to follow my dreams and... And, and well, never mind, I, I'm rambling. It's no problem, mademoiselle. To be honest, we have a much larger crime to worry about. Although I should probably ask, I don't suppose you've been stealing anything else. Silverware, perhaps. Ah, <clears throat> uh, you know about that. Yeah, I, I suppose that was me. It started with a couple of teaspoons. I, I didn't think the Baron would miss those. But, uh, well, I, I suppose the habit got a little away from me. That's one mystery solved, at least. Missing silverware. <laughs> I would uh, appreciate it if you didn't tell the Baron. He's been really kind, and I would hate to break his trust. I see. So, where to next, big bird? The garden. Dame Catalina said that she found Monsieur Grenouille on the stairs by the fountain, so this must be the very spot where the murder took place. Hey, Falcon. 
Does the crime scene invest? Uh, do the crime scene investigation thing. The crime scene investigation thing. Yeah, you know that thing where you get all eagle-eyed and analyze every object in excruciating detail. You mean search for evidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. That's not a bad suggestion. Wouldn't be the first time the Parisian police have missed something right under their noses. Okay. Another beautifully made horse statue. You know, my uncle had a horse that refused to eat hay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yep, eventually re we realized that it was just filling up on horse hors d'oeuvres. Ugh, terrible. Um, fountain. This fountain is cry finely crafted. It's solid, carved marble. Can't have been cheap. I see nothing but water on the bottom of the lower basin. It's a shame we can't see the inside of the upper basin from here. That would be a perfect place to quickly stash a murder weapon. <laughs> that's... That's actually not a terrible line of reasoning. We ought to wait in to take a closer look, just to be sure. Yeah, I suppose we should. <laughs> oh, I... I apologize, I wasn't being direct enough. What I meant to say is... <clears throat> Sparrowson, go in into the fountain and take a closer look inside the upper basin. Me? No way, you want to go waiting? You do it yourself. I am a respectable lawyer. You can't expect me to roll up my trousers and paddle around a fountain like a duck on a lake. Yeah, well, you don't pay me enough to justify getting my sweet threads wet. Look, there's only one reasonable way to settle this. We'll flip for it flip for it. Yep, I'll flip this one franc coin. You call the outcome, get it wrong, and you go for a swim. So what'll it be? Heads or tails, Napoleon face, or plant squiggles? Heads. Put all on heads. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, old emperor. Here I go. It's tails. Roll up your pantaloons, falcon. You're going for a swim. Gah. Fine. Hold my shoes. Fucking should really learn how to spot a rigged coin flip. I almost feel bad for cheating. Almost. Ah, uh, you're back. Had a good swim. No, I'm a bird, not a fish. But I did find a mystery item in the upper basin. No, murder weapon though. What's this? It's brown and sticky and it smells weird. Don't tell me that you picked up a very wet cigar, but possibly belonging to a Baron Regal? Correct. But that shouldn't be too surprising. It's his house, after all. I'll stash in the evidence photo just in case. Cigar. Okay, is there anything else we need to do here? It looks like it's just these other statues, right? Finally crafted a whole statue. The main looks almost lifelike. Would you say it behooves you to stroke it? No, I would say it not. Baron Regal certainly likes his horse statues. I don't mind the horse statues, but the little cherub people kind of creep me out. Baby should be waddling, not attempting saddleless horseback riding. A horse statue. This one has a goofy face. It reminds me of a joke. A horse walks into a bar, and the barkeep says, Why the long face? Yes, 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 we've all heard that one before. What? No, the barkeep says, You gotta stop coming here. You're drinking us all under the table. I think it's time to rein in the horse jokes. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. So I think that should be it. I don't see... I don't see anything else. I think we're done here. Good call, but are you sure you don't want to take another dip? You still have time. Don't push your luck. Did you, messieurs, have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. 
we had a good look. Thank you, Baron. But we actually have some questions for you. Hi, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Please ask away. I have nothing to hide. About your housemaid. We met your housemaid, um, Claire Ducot. She's a courteous young lady, isn't she? Yeah, she was quite helpful. Yes, uh, she was more than willing to help us with the investigation. I'm glad to hear it. Did you do want to ask something else? Have on the name of the murder. Baron Regal, I would like to ask you about your activities on the night of the murder. Oh, am I in trouble? We'll see. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. We're just gathering the full picture. I see. Well, let me think. The guests arrived at five o'clock and we all sat down for dinner at this very hall at six. That part went magnificently. The photographer arrived at seven o'clock, but it wasn't until 7.30 that we had a picture taken. My housemaid discovered the crime scene soon after that. I see. Is there something else I can help you messieurs with? I think that will be all, Baron. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Have a delightful day, Monsieur. Did you get all the information you need, Falcon? I hope so. Don't worry. If everything goes wrong in the trial, we could always just... Wing it. Terrible. Just... Terrible. Let's head back to the office and get some rest. A new day. Okay, the Palace of Justice. The Palace of Justice uh, houses the High Court, a place reserved only for the most serious of crimes. Okay, well, I guess, I guess we should just head over. Falcon and Sparrows and Stan inside the marble. Um, portico of the Palace of Justice, awaiting the opening of the Tribunal de Grande Instance. Are you nervous, Falcon? No. No. We've got this case in the bag. Look at my feathers, see? Totally unruffled. Wow! At least one of us is feeling confident. Monsieur Falcon, a petite sparrowson. Is there anything you need me to do? No, no, we we got a handle on things. Falcon was just telling me how confident he was feeling about this case. Oh, that's wonderful. I just know you two will pull through. Let's move it along, fellas. Uh, I'll be waiting from inside. Do your best for me, Monsieur Falcon. We will. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, let's kill this case, everybody. Uh, Judge Maxim, or Maxime. Maxime? I don't know. All right, settle down, everyone, settle down. Is everybody here? J.J. Falcon present. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh-huh. Rupert Babington. Oh, wait. Hmm. What kind of voice should I give him? Hmm. Um. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Rupert Babington present. The ready is prosecution, Your Honor. The ready is prosecution, Your Honor? Oh, oh, darn, that's not it. Oh, gosh, where are my notes? I knew it. Knew what? Rupert and I went to Paris Law School together. He was in all of my classes. Oh, was he smart? <laughs> no. <laughs> he always scored the second worst marks in the class. I can only assume that he bumbled through the final exams on the luck of his two rabbit's feet. Unless he's, you know, improved considerably. You might already have this trial in the bag. That's good to know, but say, Sparrow said, if Rupert scored the second lowest marks in the class, then who scored the lowest? 
I choose to exercise my right to not self-incriminate. <laughs> ah, here it is. <laughs> uh, the, the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Ah, the jury all present. All present and accounted for, Your Honor. Um, hey Falcon, I thought there were only six members of the jury for cases like this. Why do I count eight? Oh, those two birds with the funny hats are assessors, the associate judges. Two birds with the funny hats. There's four birds with the funny hats. You mean these two in the front? I don't know. Everything seems to be in order, so let's let us begin. The court is now in session for the trial of Dame Caterline de Miao. Prosecution, please call your first witness to the stand. Oh gosh, are we there already? Uh, okay, uh, I, I, cho I choose to call the officer in charge of the murder investigation, um, in Inspector uh, Volteri, uh, to the witness stand. Inspector Volteri, please approach the stand and recite the oath. As you will, your honor. Hmm, I can't get- I've given two people that voice already. Um, hmm. Let's see. What voice should I give him? He's very piratey look. I can't do the pirate voice very well, you know. I wish I could do it, but I really can't, so. Eh, I'm just gonna figure it out. As you will, Your Honor, my swear to speak without hatred and without fear, and to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, Mr. No, 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 Inspector, please stay. Um, um. Please state your name and, and occupation um, for, for, the, for the record. My name is Inspector Juste Volteri. I'm a servant to the law, a scourge of the gutter rots that plague this city. I've enforced the law for over 20 years and I shall continue until they bring the infamous Viridian killer to justice. My path begins 18 years ago. Let's stick to the questions, Inspector. Of course, your honor. Not great. I was hoping we could just have one of those bumbling, cuddly officers, but instead we're stuck with lawful goody two shoes. I bet this guy would turn his own mother in if he saw her littering. So, um, uh, Inspector, um, is it true that uh, you were the lead investigator on, on this case? That is correct. I was also among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. Then, then perhaps you can walk us through that what you witnessed upon your arrival? Absolutely. Just after 7.30, we were all alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid of ba Baron Rugel. At the scene of the crime, we found Dame Caterline de Miao. She was standing of the corpse of Monsieur Grenouille with his blood on her paws. Well, that sounds like an open... Uh, open and shut case, in my humble opinion. Uh, no, no more questions, uh, your, your honor. Bloodied paws? Nobody told me that detail. Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. That's your opportunity to find flaws in the inspector's testimony. Of course, I know this. You may begin your cross-examination, Monsieur Falcon. Cross-examination time. Cross-examine the witness to find flaws in his testimony. Select a key phrase that you find suspicious, and Falcon will press the witness for information. Ask the right questions to bring the truth to the light. Avoid pressing for pointless details. The judge and jury don't like having their time wasted. Okay. By the housemaid, that's correct. Of Baron Regal at the scene of the crime. Okay, whatever. Send over the sliced open cores with blood on her paws. Inspector, you say Dame Cataline had blood on her paws. Correct, blood clung to her fur like guilt to a convict. How much blood was there? How much blood was there on the lady's paws, Inspector? In effort to be clear that she had dirtied her hands on the victim's body. She, we noticed blood under the suspect's nails, around her fingertips, and even a little around her mouth. Her mouth? How vile. Hmm. 
The inspector's answer seems pretty definitive. Do you have another question about the blood on Dove Caroline's paws? Yes. Whose blood? Whose blood was it? Ha! Huh. What a question. It was Monsieur Grinouise, of course. How can you be so sure? Um, 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 I object. This line of questioning is really absurd. There was only one murder victim that night, Falcon. The blood on Dame Caroline's paws could only have belonged to one person, Monsieur Grenouille. Um, judge, 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 hello, pick me. Um, Falcon's trying to delay the trial by asking pointless questions. I am afraid the prosecution may have a point, Monsieur Falcon. There is actually a point, because of course, you know, um, the detail before she mentioned that there were, you know, there's no cutlery, and they had steak, and it was bloody steak, too. So, of course, everyone had to eat with their hands, there's blood, that, yeah. I already, I already figured out this entire game. <laughs> Do you have any reason to suspect that the blood belonged to someone other than Monsieur Grenouille? I do. I do, Your Honor. Actually, I have more than suspicion. I have evidence that the blood on Dame Caroline's paws had nothing to do with the murder. This is a foolish waste timing, um, Falcon. Uh, if the blood on Dame Caroline's paws didn't come from the victim, then then where did the, blo the blood come from? <laughs> the stake. On the evening of the murder, Dame Caroline ate a bloody rare steak. Is this true, Monsieur Rappington? Uh, well, I, um, in a matter of, uh, I mean, speaking, I mean, I suppose, you know, steak may have, um, um been on the, on the menu. I will be lurking for the most part. Okay, you'll be lurking for the most part. No problem. Then, Inspector, would you acknowledge the possibility that the blood on the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but to the stake? Well, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, d d uh, uh, don't answer that, Inspector. It is a possibility. No. Oh. Intriguing, pretty convincing. Well, you gained a little f uh, favor with the jury. Yes. So, Inspector Volteri, is it possible that you arrested an innocent bystander simply for being a messy eater? Now hold on just one minute, Falcon. You are overlooking something quite crucial. Dame Catalina is an elegant bourgeoisie kitten. She was no doubt brought up with, um, flawless etiquette and perfect table manners. At the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork and a left hand and a knife and a right like any proper civilized animal. How could she have possibly gotten blood on her paws with such good manners? Oh, that is a good question. Or at least, it would be at any ordinary dinner banquet. But as it happened, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced Dame Catalina to eat with her paws. Dame Catalina was forced to eat steak with her paws because... The silverware of the household had been previously stolen. S stolen? I don't recall any mention of that in the police report. We weren't aware of anything missing from the regal residence when we performed the initial investigation. But as it happened, uh, Baron Regal approached us about this very subject last night. Uh, 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 what? What a twist. <laughs> what is the meaning of all this? Bloody steak, misplaced silverware. Inspector, was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? Lax. My investigation? Judge, I assure you, I am the most thorough investigative officer on the force. Then it is amazing that the Parisian police managed to solve any crimes at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. Fine. So be it, messieurs. Until next time. Prospector, I trust your next witness is ready. Yes, yes, of, of course, Your Honor. Um, I call upon, um, um, uh, let's see, Monsieur uh, Rubito Rubino, um, the, the photographer who attended the banquet on the, on the night of the murder. Monsieur Rubito Rubino, please approach the stand and recite the oath. 
How does it go? I swear to speak without hatred, without fear, and to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's a little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Could the um witness please introduce himself to uh, the, the court for record? <laughs> As if anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. I'm the great Monsieur Rubita Ravina, cutting edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures. I capture the very essence. Je suis la danse. I'm not even gonna try to speak Spen, like French. Je suis the artist. Tu es une I don't know. I don't speak French at all. I've not taken a single class. <laughs> You may have seen my works in hip magazines, Le Branche, or Sechote. I can send you tweets if you like. Mm, those tweets. What on earth is a tweet? A bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon. It's the 19th century. Get with the times already. Yeah, man. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your works are very um, impressive, um, Monsieur Rubino, but. Um, Let's get down to business. Could you tell us your um, activities on the night of the murder? Very well. I was hired by Baron Rogel to capture the evening's events. I arrived at seven in the evening. I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic photograph. Then I billed Baron Rogel and left. Like a true artist. And uh, with regards to the photograph itself, who did you photograph? Oh, I thought you might ask. I brought a copy so that you could all see for yourself. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. My word. This is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So let's see. Who do we have here? In the middle, we see uh, Baron Regal, the lion who hosted the event. On the left, we see uh, Senor uh, Patois de Mal, the father of the defendant, uh, Dame Cataline. And finally, we see uh, the housemaid, uh, Coline Duhot, who I suspect they have snuck into the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Monsieur Grinvy, and the second is the defendant. Uh, Dame Catalina de Miao. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Monsieur Robington. This proves nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. That does not mean that they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. The prosecution may continue. Behind the photograph subjects, we see a wall clock. Uh, with the time set at, uh, 7.30. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Volteri told us earlier, that's the exact time that the murder took place. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dem Catalan herself. Hey, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different from the one we, uh, borrowed from Rubino's studio. I see it, too. Our photograph shows Coline du Hot, Dame Caroline, and Signor Petois. But Monsieur Rubino's photograph shows Baron Rugal, where Dame Caroline should be standing. If we assume that only one photograph was taken, then this demonstrates that one of the photographs must have been edited in some way. You should just slam the evidence down, be like, BAM! Inconsistency. This whole courtroom is out of order. Case closed. I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could, you know, be a little more delicate with your words. No, I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Rubino would ask how we acquired it, and the whole trial would be dera would derail. In the worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license, and we would be arrested for theft. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, we don't want that. No. No, we don't. I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the pres the defense may proceed. <laughs> it's a waste of time if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. I like, okay, I actually like this version. 
in um normally in phoenix right you literally have to listen to their testimony over and over and over again to select what you have to you know argue over with this in written form and everything's underlined oh it's so simple it's so great um let's take a look closer look at this photograph Just to clarify, Monsieur Rubino, the photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? That is correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most curious, because I see a mistake. A, a <laughs> mistake? Possible. <laughs> I just tell you, Monsieur, the camera's perfect, unbiased device that photographs and produces a flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any, um, mistakes. Uh, perhaps you could be more specific? Certainly. The clock in this photograph. There's something not right about it. Uh, well, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the, uh, the key piece of evidence that implicates his client. <laughs> Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rubbington. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. Ah, here it is. The photograph clearly shows the clock's hands pointing at seven and six. That much is self-evident. Which is most curious, because the clock in the lounge of Chateau Crenier has no hands. It has no hands? Ah, uh, yes, the clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Regal or his housemaid if you have doubts. Monsieur Robino, how do you explain this disruptancy? I, 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 I don't know. There must be some kind of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is, must, there is no mistake, monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. But maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock's hands should be? Please, monsieur, don't patronize us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, Monsieur Rubino, edited this photograph. Edited? <laughs> I'm no expert, but I'm no expert, but I suspect that you use paint or ink to carefully put hands on the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the pair and the photograph just to simplify the editing process. I... <laughs> Falcon, your reasoning is absurd. Why would that witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph to have taken place at precisely 7.30, it, cl it clears all the photograph's subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Rubino created a perfect alibi. Of course, this raises further questions. Who was the witness protecting? And why was Monsieur Rubino coerced, bribed, threatened? And of silence, let's hear some words, Monsieur Rubino. Fine. You got me. I'm guilty. I did it all. You did it. You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Grenouille. What? No, 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 no. I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing the fraudulent photographs, okay? I was ordered to, you know, make changes to the printed photographs, and yes, that included handing hands to the clock. You were ordered by whom? I... I dare not say. Monsieur Rubinio, I strongly advise you to answer the defense's question. You have pledged to speak without fear, after all. With respect, Judge, I fear... His claws. No, more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I I shall name no names. His claws. Did you hear that, Falcon? That is most unfortunate. Monsieur Robinio, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancient regime, after all. But since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. I can't protest. 
That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. <laughs> Good day, messieurs. Hmm, pretty convincing. Wow. Hmm. So, uh, the um, clock's hands were painted on, so what? It doesn't matter. No, it does matter, though. <laughs> the photograph still depicts Madame Catiline is absent. Close to the time of the murder, that's significant. Don't be dense, Monsieur Rabington. If the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? Still the portrayal of the night's event. Because we accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. It is possible that Dam Cutter line was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know that the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was it Signor Pretor de Mar, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks a means or motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Signor Pertois to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Regal deliberately tried to frame damn Catiline, because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar of the community. He would never do such a thing. Monsieur Rabington, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the persecutor. However... Perhaps I should offer my opinion. The, the Baron, it's not um, um time for your witness testimony yet. So you would think, prosecutor. And yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. I incompetence? Indeed. Let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, Judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good, and I trust that the defense has no objections. No, no objections here. Fantastic, but... Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice in this, etc., etc., etc. No, prosecutor. Ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Uh, okay. Um, Baron Regal, um, on the on the night of uh, the the initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grintwy left to visit the garden. Dame Catiline followed behind him moments later. Signor Pertois, Monsieur Rubina, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grintwy and Dame Catiline. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from here. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity, Gossion? I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Regal, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Okay. Let's see. Dinner. Um, went to visit the garden. Housemaid. Hmm. Look at the evidence. What have I not used yet? Okay, there's a cigar. Huh. I don't know if this, I don't know if it's the housemaid. Hang on. Okay, the thing is. Yeah, okay, so I mean, that part is correct. It's just. Uh. Baron Rugal, I have a couple of questions about your housemaid, Colline Duhart. Does she smoke? Does your housemaid smoke cigars? Uh, well, that question came out of the left field. Definitely not. Mademoiselle Duhart detests the smell of tobacco. Let's see. 
putting together a bit of bigger picture, aren't we? I think so. The pieces are slowly falling into place. Do you have another question about the housemaid? Yes. I'm not gonna say she's a thief. Never mind. We're talking about the housemaid enough already, haven't we? Let's change the subject. Garden. Baron, we saw the murder scene. Your garden for ourselves. Baron Rigel, when was the last time you ventured into your own garden? As it happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Years, you say? Indeed. Baron, I do not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have visited the garden recently. Balderdash, my word is gold. Show the court the so-called hard evidence that I've been in my own garden. This was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Right beside where the murder occurred. A, a cigar? But, um, but I mean, that could belong to anybody. Prosecuted, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I have I hadn't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after hearing the housemaid's cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. That must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. You see, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. I would find that I would find that believable if the cigar were casually discarded. But as it happened, the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basement, a location that could only be accessed with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped. It was deliberately hidden. There are many number of ex possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. That is, that you, Baron Regal, deliberately hid your cigar to disguise your own illicit activities. <laughs> Did I now? And what illicit activities would those be? You want me to spell it out? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rogel, murdered Monsieur Grenouille. That is what you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of murder. How shamelessly brazen. Th that is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon. The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order. <laughs> it seems like the cat game was pretty the other day. The other day. Yeah, this is a this is bird attorney, uh, aviary attorney. And if you've played any of the uh, Phoenix Wright games, it's literally the same thing. It's literally the same game, except with animals and birds. Lots of bird puns. Just so many bird puns. Your allegation is baseless. You have no evidence. Um, no of uh, of means, motive, or opportunity or anything. No evidence. Think harder, Mr. Robinson. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Rogel as the prime suspect. You want the means? The Baron certainly had the means. He lined his claws as sharp as the surgeon's blade. Cutting a frog bark would be trivial. Even Monsieur Rubino confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. If this, I would never threaten a man with violence. You want a motive? The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. By, remo by removing a business partner, the Baron's share of the railway company increased from one third to one half. Yeah, that's basically a perfect day. It's like dialogue driven story game, right? This is preposterous. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No. He crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. 
Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build the perfect alibi for himself, photographing the guests in front of a handless clock to make it easy for editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let the slanderous yawn go untested? Say something, object! I, um, um, um... Need more, need more! <laughs> oh, you're pitiful, you useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence, his finished cigar. He knew that leaving it at the crime scene would raise suspicion, but he didn't have the time to properly dispose of it, so out of desperation, he threw it into his fountain, out of the sight of his guests and any snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Signor Petois de Mial, since that would ensure total control of his railway company. Alas, Dame Cataline was the first to happen upon the crime scene. So the Baron improvised. The music is almost louder than yours. Probably equally as loud. Is it? Okay. I was wondering about that. So let me make it even lower. There. Is that better? Okay. No. There's only one outrage here. That is that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. Yeah, sounds better. Great. I wasn't sure if it was just an intense part. Yeah, with all the classical music in the background. You're a bourgeoisie of the worst kind. How dare you, Garcian! The utter nerve of a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous. I'm nothing like that. That cat bourgeoisie, I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. No. You're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp. I ought to get you here now like, like a damn frog. That's not the words I would use. Um, hmm. Get you like a frog. I don't know. I... I would have worded that a little bit better, Lion. I ju it just doesn't make it look good, you know? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Could. Could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Yana. Let's go, old man, to the concierge with you. Don't touch me, the filthy jackdaw. I can walk myself. This is quite a turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? I, uh, well, in, in a matter of, um, speaking, um, to be honest, <laughs> no. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of the court please be patient in this time. Falcon, that was pretty incredible. Thank you. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Caroline's innocence. We'll get... A not guilty verdict for sure. <sighs> Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Damn Catalina's innocence. All I've done is demonstrate that there is a significant possibility that she is not guilty. I'm not sure that I understand the difference. We have reached a decision. In the light of the recent revelations, it is clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Damn Catalina de Mian, to be not guilty. Not guilty, everybody. Killed it. Not guilty. Monsieur Falcon, Petite Sparrowson, you did it. Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. Boom. You did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. This was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. 
I'll go get a bottle of wine, three of our least dirty glasses. You were amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Oh, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Sprouse and I just worked at unveiling the truth given the facts of the case. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, there was no need to play coy. The case is over. Play coy? Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, uh, I'll spell it out for you. I actually did kill. <laughs> She did kill him. I murdered, I knew it. I murdered Monsieur Grenvy. I saw him in the garden, all drunk and vulnerable, and I seized my opportunity. It was nothing personal, just business, you understand. Business. To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. Your confession didn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rogel's cigar put in, in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brains of the Paris's finest. The Falcon proved that Monsieur Rubino's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was p busy paying a visit to Monsieur Grenouille in the garden. My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Rubino to paint me over Baron Rogel and to add hands to the clock. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering the either photograph by trial day. It was a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative because that could have gone very badly. What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who could have won a case like this, even for a bourgeoisie kitty like me. I think you should leave. <laughs> Fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu. Monsieur Falcon, adieu, Petite Sparrowson. Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon? Well, that that's awkward. Um, your game has been saved. Do I wish to continue? Um, yes. But I will be taking a break, though. So, after this, I'm gonna take a little break. Because I need to run and do things and, like, eat a snack or something. Oh, look at that fine looking bird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let us be reasonable, senors, I'm sure. Uh, oh, it's a fox. Ooh. Okay. Let's be. I'm sure we can do this. There's no misunderstanding. In the name of the king, arrest that Spaniard. Oh no. A fox among wolves. Dun dun dun. I knew Falcon wouldn't be like turning up to the office on Friday. Okay. So what I'm gonna do. Um I'm just gonna leave it paused for right now. I'm gonna take a let me see. Uh let's do like a twenty minute break. Yeah? Yeah. Well, maybe 15. We'll see. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm gonna call it. Like, 15, 20-ish minutes. Somewhere around there. Enough time for y'all to either grab something or do something. I don't know. Anyway. Be right back. Okay. Where are we? We're playing the bird games. Let's see. Okay. 
welcome back to the people that are still here. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's resume this game. I knew Falcon wouldn't feel like turning up, but now it's midday on Monday, and there's still no sign of him. This is becoming a little concerning. I should go look for him. I should probably go find him. His home would be a good place to start, but Bird Brain never gave me his address. You don't even know where he lives? Here. <laughs> Hello, Jesse. How's it going? <laughs> I'll just have to find him the hard way. Where do I live? Huh? Where would I... Here? Is this where I find him? Excuse me, monsieur. I'm, I'm looking for my friend. Do I look like a lost and found to you? Buzz off, bird brain. Alright then. Later. Why is he so mean? Excuse me, Mademoiselle Duhat. Uh, down here. Oh, there you are. It's, um, Sparrowson, right? That's right. I heard about the case you were involved in. I never would have thought the Baron was a murderer. He'd always treat me with the utmost respect. But then I suppose it makes sense that the most ruthless killers are the ones who can put up the best facade. Yeah, I suppose so. Say, how's your friend doing? He seemed a little down last night. Oh, you seen him? Yes, he was brooding in the corner of the Canard Joyeux. Yeah. Lenard, Lenard, blah, 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 blah. Le Canard Joyeux, mumbling and drinking. It, it was a little depressing, to be perfectly honest. Le Canard Joyeux. That's a dingy student bar in Rue. This French stuff is really getting to me. I do not know at all how to... Uh, Speak French. Class starts in like 20 minutes. What? What class starts in like 20 minutes? Oh, is it your 3D animation class? Because I was about to be like, class starts in 20 minutes. I don't think, I don't think you're calling Paul. No, no, roll call's not playing in 20 minutes. And I'm not in school. <laughs> yeah, right. My class for school. That's what I thought. Cool, cool, cool. And Rujan, right? It's not dingy, just a little rustic. In any case, that's an enormous help. Thanks, mademoiselle. You're late. It's like a bad dream. <laughs> Anytime, Sparrowson. Okay. You need to pick me up? Come along to Madame uh, Quanelle's student tavern of Rue Rouge... John. Rujan, you're always welcome. It's like a bad dream. Sparrowson steps through the doors of Le Canard Joyeux, the dingiest student tavern in all of Paris. His nostrils fill with the pungent aroma of sour wine and bitter tobacco. Whoa, ruffle my feathers if it isn't little Sparrowson. I haven't seen you in years. How you doing, hun? I'm feeling pretty good, huh, Madame Quanel? Thanks for asking. I'm actually here to find a friend. He's a big guy named JJ uh, Falcon. Falcon? Yeah, that sorry lump has been here all weekend. He's just been moaning and muttering to himself all weekend. Frankly, he's bringing the whole atmosphere down. I'll take care of him. Thanks, Madame Quanel. It's no problem, hon. He's probably still in the corner of the drinking room upstairs. Hmm. No sign of him. Mon dieu, I almost stepped on the big fellow. Uh, Falcon? What are you doing on the floor? Hey, Falcon! Falcon, wake up! Wow, the bird's completely out cold. He must have drunk this place dry. Ah, <sighs> let's see, how do you wake a drunk person? Kick him, yell at him, pour a drink on his head. Hmm. What should we do? Should we kick him? Should we yell at him? 
or should we pour a drink on his head? Probably the most civilized thing to do would to just be yell at him, but I don't know. I kind of want to pour a drink on his head. You know? I, I, I kind of want to do that. So. Hmm. Drink always. <laughs> You're right. That's, that's, that's how I wake up my people, too. I pour drinks on their heads. Let's do it. Well, I guess it's time for a rude awakening. Wakey, wakey. Mm. Ah, good, you're up. Are you with us, Falcon? Yeah, feeling sober. We should probably head back to the aviary office so we can get some work done. I don't understand it, Sparrowson. Huh? I thought I did everything right. I followed all the procedures. I found all the evidence. I presented the case beautifully. And yet, a guilty feline walks free while an innocent man sits in custody. What went wrong? Where's the justice? I don't know. Or we need to try harder. <sighs> try harder. Maybe we need to try harder? Try harder. I don't know if we messed up or if the system's messed up or what. But we just have to do our best as lawyers, I suppose. Maybe if we work hard enough, we can stop mess-ups from happening again. Sorry, Falcon. I don't have the answers, but... What I do have is freshly baked croissants from Pierre's Belangerie? Belangerie? Is that the word? I hope it is. Croissants. Yep, they're waiting for you back at the aviary. I'm sitting here moping about justice and you offer me croissants. Well, it's, I mean, it's not just croissants. I got some, you know, pains of chocolat. Ooh, I got some chocolate croissants, too. Mm. I could go for a chocolate croissant. Fantastic. Then let's make a move. All right. I admit it. These croissants are amazing. I told you, Pierre's Belagerie on Rue Verde. Oh, blah, 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 blah. On Rue Verde is something else. Oh, that reminds me. The baker told me something interesting. Do you know what they call um, pines of chocolate in America? They don't call them that? Nope. Pronunciation difficulties. American is like a whole nother language. So what do they call them? Chocolate croissants. <laughs> Look at the mouse. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Chocolate croissants. And what do they call profiteroles? I think those those are, are I think that those are still profiteroles, but rather than custard, they like to fill them with ice cream and smother them in melted chocolate. Simply outstanding. Is this the aviary attorney? Can I speak to someone, please? Well, what do they call crepes? <laughs> Excuse me. Did you just hear something, Sparrowson? Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. What can I help you, uh, what can I do for you, little one? Oh, oh gosh, where to start? Uh, your name, perhaps. Mousy. My name is Mousy. So I just entered into something. Yeah, uh, you're, uh, welcome to, uh, Aviary Attorney. Uh, this is, a, uh, this is the bird meme game where, uh, we're lawyers in France. Bird France. <laughs> anyway. Mousy. My name is Mousy. <laughs> and what can we do for you, Miss Monsieur Mousy? I have this friend, and he has fallen under some legal turbulence. Legal turbulence? You mean he's been arrested? Um, yes. I suppose so. They're saying he's a murderer, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. That's quite a problem. I know, but I forgot to mention, he's the Prince of Spain. The Prince?
Prince of Spain. And you didn't think that was worth mentioning from the start? I forgot, I forgot. How do you forget that? <laughs> oh, just that, that one little thing, you know. I must ask, Mousy, why don't you come to us? I would have thought that the Spanish royal family would hire legal counsel with a bit more... Not terribleness? Expertise. Oh, um, the prince has great faith in your lawyering skills. Monsieur Falcon, he said that your reputation as a lawyer was renowned. Really? The prince said that? This is a great opportunity, Falcon. Surely you wouldn't deny a request from the prince of Spain. Meh. <laughs> Not a big deal. We don't care. We'll take it. Of course we'll take the case. Grab your coat, Sparrowson. We have royalty to defend. That's the spirit. Good luck to you, messieurs. You aren't coming with us, Mousy? I, um, have other matters to attend to. But Prince Juan is being held in the conciergerie. I'm sure he will fill in all the details. Right. Let's make a move, then. Um. Good day, monsieur. Oh. It's you two again. Hey, nice work on the Lane Kittens trial. <laughs> Baron Regal is pacing around his cell right now, ranting about wringing your neck. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's like, super mad. <laughs> but hey, criminal's a criminal, right? The lion didn't want a death sentence. He probably shouldn't have killed a guy. Oh, you're, wait, you're not here to defend him, are you? Because that would be hilarious. <laughs> We're actually here to see Prince uh, Juan Querido. Okay, Juan Querido, heir to the throne of Spain. The mouthy fox, huh? Guy's driving me nuts with his signores and his flamboyant attitude. I say the sooner he hangs, the better. Why is the Prince of Saint being hung in France? Hmm. Well, come on, then. While we're young. At least it seems less disturbing than how to fool a boyfriend. You know, I would, I literally just compared this game to that. I never actually never played How to Fool Boyfriend. I've just seen so many memes about it. Um, but this is much closer to um, Phoenix Wright. It just has animals in, in the game. So, <laughs> the Prince of Spain, I assume. Indeed, I am Juan Querido, heir to the throne of España, and you must be the legendary lawyer, Senor J.J. Falcon. Well, I wouldn't say I'm legendary. I wouldn't even say notable. Such humility, I would expect nothing less from renowned individuals such as yourselves. But let's get down to business. I trust that my compañero, Mousy, explains the situation. He told us that you have been accused of murder, but we need some further details before we can start our investigation. Of course. What is it that you wanted to know? To be honest, Prince Juan, I'm a little confused as to how a member of royalty could get into so much trouble. Could you walk us through your activities on the day of the murder? Of course, let me see where to begin. It was the cold and misty morning of the 6th of January. I'd heard that King Louis Philippe was unveiling a new painting at the Palais du Louvre, and I wished to meet the man myself. Meet the man himself. So after a brief stroll and picnic in Tuileries Garden, I entered the palace. I found the royal entourage in the Louvre's Grand Gallery. When I saw an opportunity, I presented a humble gift to the king. A rose, an international symbol of fashion and virtue. How romantic. <laughs> but before the king could take it, a rather rude person snatched it from my fingers. It was a royal guard, a dog by the name of Major Howell. 
Ouch! cried out Major Howell. I have pricked myself upon the thorns of this dastardly flower. And then the Major slumped to the floor, his face turned blue, his mouth frothed, and he died. He died straight away after being pricked. Straight away, senor. It's obvious that the pricked finger was the cause of death, but I don't know if any poisoner acts so fast. Nor do I, senor Falcon. But clearly the police left that poison upon the Rose's thorns. Thorns was the only log logical explanation. There were so many witnesses, even the king himself. What could I say to defend myself? So where did this rose come from? I acquired it from a beautiful Parisian flower seller at Le Halles Market. A girl by the name of Catherine Marie Sin Singe? Signe? I'm just gonna say Singe. A girl by the name of Catherine Marie Singe. But surely you are not suggesting that the flower girl applied the poison herself, Signor Falcon. Well, I'm not making any accusations yet. I'm just ex planning to explore every line of inquiry. Poison Rose. Did you want to ask something else, Signor Falcon? Why are you up? Why are you in Paris? Why did you come to Paris? Why did you come to Paris, Prince Juan? I was on a diplomatic mission that clearly didn't work. I do not know whether you are familiar with the current events, but you may have heard that my country is in a state of uh, turmoil. Contenders for the Spanish throne are slandering, plotting, backstabbing, it's chaos, and the people are suffering. Senior? The rough pronunciation. Senior. Huh. Okay. Catherine Marie Senior. It would really help if, you know, I knew any, anything about French pronunciation, but I don't. So I'm pretty just, I'm pretty much just gonna butcher the pronunciation of everything in this entire game. So if anyone is French that is watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I thought, if I can befriend some French royalty, perhaps even the king himself. It's really weird. I somehow have given, uh, Prince Juan a, a half-baked French accent, and I've given Falcon a half-baked uh, British accent, and I've given Sparrowson a half a, a genuine American accent, and then <laughs> I've given I've given no one the correct accent so far. I just like the French language butcher away. Yeah, I've butchered everyone's accent so far, so enjoy. So I thought. If I can befriend some French royalty, perhaps even the king himself, maybe I can strengthen my family's name. With the Kiro dynasty restored, I would have a chance at bringing peace to my beautiful nation. Well, I guess that plan's gone out the window. Sparrowson, don't be rude. No, he's right. I failed terribly. Don't fret. Prince Juan, we'll do everything in our power to clear your name. Maybe, once the dust has settled, you will have another opportunity to speak with King Louis Felipe and complete your mission. Thank you, Signor Falcon. I'm sure you will do your best. Was there anything you else you wanted to ask? What were you reading before you... before we were, you know, we so rudely interrupted? Ah, this book. It is a Spanish classic, Don Quixote of La Mancha. Do you know it? Readings for squares. <laughs> I'm only a lawyer. I don't read. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I haven't read it, but I have heard of it. I know the general gist of what Don Quixote is about, so... I've heard of it. It's about the knight who just windmills, right? That is one part of the story. story, yes. The hero is a virtuous but elderly knight by the name of Don Quixote. 
Everybody knows lawyers are triangles. <laughs> In the chapter you mentioned, he takes up arms against an army of giants who are terrorizing a town. Kyote's partner, Sancho, warns him that the giants are just windmills and their flaming arms are just flaming, flailing. You know what, I think flaming arms would be more intimidating, though. Their flailing arms are just sails swirling in the wind, but Kyote doesn't listen. He takes up his lance, gets on his horse, and charges anyway. Sounds like a dumb Kyote. Am I right, Falcon? Perhaps he is dumb. Senor Sparrowson, but many of us spend our whole lives jousting imaginary giants. Speak for yourself, Juan. I've never been jousting, let alone, let alone seeing a giant. I think we are getting off track here. Indeed. I tell you what, Senor Falcon, I'll lend you my copy of this book. Perhaps you'll have time to give it a read at some point. Apparently Don Quixote is a gigantic book, so... I'm not reading anything. <laughs> Maybe I will. Thank you. L. Ingenioso of book. Oh my gosh. Blah, 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 blah. Has been added to your evidence folder. Was there anything else you needed to know? No, I think that's everything. Thank you. What's the plan, Big Bird? Well, we have two lines of inquiry. We should head to the scene of the crime where the Palais du... The Palace de Louvre. And see if we can find any clues or witnesses. And we should interview the flower girl in Les Halles Market to see if she has anything to say about this alleged poisoned rose. Two tasks spread over six days? Oh, sounds too easy. Let's not get complacent. Good luck, senores. Wait a minute, Falcon. What is it? Did something seem... off about Prince Juan to you? I don't know. He seems nice, I think. Um, <laughs> he's quite the character because I've given him quite the character. <laughs> he seemed colorful to me, throwing roses, spouting about literature. Juan's one suave Spaniard. Hmm, maybe I misread him. Well, look, if this is bothering you, we could always ask around. Maybe someone in the city knows Juan's dirty secret, if he actually has anything to hide, that is. Yeah, let's dig up the dirt. But we've still got a trial to prepare for. Priorities, Sparrowson. Priorities. A new day. Okay. So, let's see. Let's go to here first. Speak with the flower girl <clears throat> vendors and buskers performers and thieves bourgeoisie and peasants all bustle from place to place prince juan said that he met a flower girl here uh senior okay senior i think he said her name was there's a swan with flowers over there do you think that's her i think so possible that she knows about the murderer or even that she is the murderer herself so we should probably act with tact and finesse <laughs> excuse me mademoiselle flower lady we lack a word tact sparrowson tact we've been we've been over this good days messieurs are you interested in purchasing a flower? You know, no, I'm not going to do that voice. I gave that voice to uh, the kitty cat. No, the kitty cat's voice was more like, Good day, messieurs. Are you interested in purchasing a flower? Damn, this boring you not responding to the chat. What's good? Uh, I... I am responding to the chat. You gave me, like... A solid 10 seconds to respond while I'm busy voice acting and reading the game you know I, I like I, I apologize for not responding immediately but um, uh, okay I, I will return back to my game now goodness um, 
Let's see. Uh, what what voice should I give her? Hmm. I still haven't decided yet. You know what? I'm just uh the snark. <laughs> Good day, uh, messieurs. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna give like kind of a. You know what? I'm gonna give her an Estelle voice. Good day, messieurs. Are you interested in purchasing a flower? Yes, I wish. Uh, I wish to purchase a rose from Milady. I'm afraid that I'm out of roses. I sold my last one a week ago. Perhaps you would be satisfied with a chrysanthemum instead. Tis a beautiful flower from a fair maiden. Please. Please don't mind the sparrows him. He felt out of his nest as a baby, and he has said dumb things ever since. Hey! Let me introduce myself. I am J.J. Falcon, defense attorney. Are you Mademoiselle, uh, Senia? That's right. Catherine Marie Senia. I suppose you're here to ask about the royal assassination attempt. How did you know? I am no few. I am no fool, monsieur. I know that a rose I sold was used as the murder weapon. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken so long for someone to directly question me. The, the Parisian police seem to have a habit of missing obvious leads. So, do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? Business is slow. Please, ask away. Mademoiselle, you mentioned that you sold your last rose a week ago. Who did you sell it to? The person who bought the rose. I didn't catch his name, but he was a charming red fox. Sounds like her horn. I met him a week ago, on the 6th. We talked for a little while about the usual things, you know, like how everyone seems to be in debt these days. Then he bought a rose and left. I hear that the fox is on trial, but to be honest, monsieur, I... I don't think he's guilty. Oh? And why is that? Well... Actually, never mind. It's just a gut feeling. Mademoiselle, it just so happens that we're defending this particular fox and the courtesai. If you have anything to say that could prove his innocence, now would be the time to let us know. I... I'm sorry, messieurs. I... I can't. Wait! Mademoiselle Sanya, wait up! Damn it. Nice display of uh, tact and finesse, finesse uh, Falcon. You scared her off. Uh, the Swan obviously knows something crucial about this case. We need to get to the bottom of whatever it is. Agreed, but I don't think she'll be in the mood to tell us anything else. Um, I know, why don't we try acting with a little more tact and finesse next time? Hush. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the tavern. Really, Falcon? I thought you were done with your mopey drinking. I'm not here to drink Sparrowson, or mope for that matter. Taverns are a fantastic hub of information. If we wish to get if we wish to get to learn more about this prince Juan, then this would be an ideal place to start asking questions. Oh, that's pretty good thinking. Ah, you two are back. Are you feeling any better, Falcon? Much better. Thank you for asking, Madame Quanel. That's great to hear, son. Will it be the usual? No, 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 no. I'm back to investigate work. I'm back to investigate work today. So I've got to keep sharp. We wanted to know if you've seen a Prince of Spain around here late in recently. A Prince of Spain? I don't know if you've noticed, Han, but this isn't exactly the classiest pub in Paris. I'm lucky to serve the occasional bourgeoisie. You can forget about see me seeing a member of royalty. That's a pity. Maybe I should ask some of your patrons. Feel free. The old regulars, Rufus and Paul, or... Playing cards in the attic, same as always. But we get all sorts of colorful characters in the drinking room. I bet if you ratted enough cages, you would find someone who knows whatever it is you want to know. Thank you, madame. Let's see where to start. 
Alright, guard room. Oh, come on, pal. Just one more game of Jacques Noir. Hmm. Absolutely not. My wallet is hurting enough as it, as it is. Hmm. I'm always struggling. I'm like, what kind of what kind of voices do I want to give these characters? I try to avoid repeating voices for different characters, but seeing as this game has like six billion NPCs, I'm probably gonna have to. So, um, please, I'll even let you deal this time. The answer is no, Rufus. I'm skint. If you want to play cards, you will have to play someone else. Fine, I'll ask that big fellow. Excuse me, Monsieur. Yes, you, monsieur. Would you care to play some Jacques Noir? Sure. Absolutely. Deal me in, monsieur. Very well, then. Do you know how to play? No. <laughs> nope. I'm only familiar with the uh, Seagull and Top to Rock. Oh, this is much better than those silly games. Let me tell you how it works. I have a deck of cards with values between 1 and 11. I'll deal you one card at a time. If you hit 21, you win. I'll give you five francs. Five francs? Seems a little steep. This is a man's game, so you're only children gamble over petty sous. Besides, higher stakes makes for a more exciting game, right? I suppose so. Okay, so pretty much I'm playing Blackjack 21 in this game. That, that's what that's what I'm playing. Okay. So that's a six. Hit. It's a seven. Twelve. Oh my gosh. It's, ah, that's a 20. Perfect. Bust. Yes. Bust. Yeah. Well played, monsieur. Here's your payout. Shall we have another round? Yes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here and play back blackjack for a while, guys. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> Deal me in, monsieur. Dude, I love this. <laughs> I'm just gonna play blackjack. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Oh, that's an eleven. Twelve. Fourteen. Oh shoot. Dang it! Ah, I knew it. Oh, shoot. All right. Yes. I need to make the 10 money that I lost earlier. Okay. Let's do this. I might develop a gambling problem at the end of this, but I'm, I'm keep playing. Yes! 21. Whew. Whew. Well played, monsieur. Shall we have another round? Yep. Deal me in. Yeah, this starts our long and unhealthy addiction, right? That's a six, 13, 23, dang it. Game, not even give me a chance. How much money do I have? 50 francs. Okay. The 1718 mark sucks because it's like it's not a great number, but it's also like in the danger zone, too. Okay, let's see 21. So I only have a room for four, and uh, that's not pretty. I'm gonna stand, see if that, see if I can beat the dealer with the 17. Yes, okay, good. Whew. Okay, so I have 55. Let's get 60 francs and then I'm done. Cat myself a 60. I don't wanna I don't wanna de develop a gambling addiction. <laughs> okay. 12. 17. Ew. Okay, let's, let's stay there. Dang it. I 
I want my 60 francs, okay? I want my 60 francs. Give me my stupid money. I wonder, I mean, so what's the point of having a wallet though? Like, it, it, can I like buy things with that wallet? I mean, what, what, what am I gonna do with the money? You know, other than give it to poor people. 29, heck yeah. I have no idea. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna have to settle with my 50. That's often the purpose of having money in a wallet. Well, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't know if this game has like a shopping system because I've not seen any shopping so far. So, I don't, I don't know what, how much money I need, you know? I'll play one more. <laughs> one more game. And then I'm done, okay? I'm done after this. Ten, eighteen, stand. Twelve? 